Hi, my name is Avery Clements and I'm here at Andersonville National Historic Site to begin our Juneteenth series and discuss African American history here at Andersonville. Juneteenth is a federal holiday which recognizes the end of slavery in the United States. Although the Emancipation Proclamation was signed into effect on January 1, 1863, it did not receive full legitimacy until June 19, 1865 when Union troops arrived in Galveston, Texas to free the last 250 enslaved people. Camp Sumter Military Prison closed just a month earlier in May of 1865. The prison's construction began in January of 1864, and the first trainload of prisoners came just a month later on February 24th. Pressed for time, the Confederate government searched for labor. Local enslaved labor was impressed to construct the stockade walls. These men cut trees, hewn logs, and dug post holes before placing the walls that would surround the prisoners. They were also utilized in constructing earthworks. However, those crews were actually a mixed um, labor force of both enslaved labor and Confederate guards. Enslaved labor in the region would have also played a key component into the agricultural production which fed the prisoners and the guards. Able-bodied black prisoners were placed onto work details as laborers. All in all, Andersonville held about 120 USCT members. Some of these men enlisted as freedmen, others were conscripted, and some served as substitutes. Around three-fifths of all of the black troops have once been enslaved. Despite the fact that they were given work that was a combination of both the paroled white prisoners and enslaved laborers, they were not allowed to intermingle with the enslaved labor and talk to them. Beginning in September of 1864, a common job given to black prisoners was to bury the dead that had accumulated from inside the stockade walls. This established an early and lasting connection to the cemetery, which would continue into Captain James Moore's reconstruction after the war. When Captain Moore arrived to Andersonville in the summer of 1865, black labor played a crucial role in reconstructing the cemetery. Work crews for the cemetery work were comprised of both black and white laborers, and these men worked together to raise and level the ground, reinter body from other areas, and build lasting structures that still stand today, such as the brick fence. Between 1867 and 1868, workers in the cemetery crew reinterred over 800 bodies, including the 64 smallpox victims from Andersonville's smallpox hospital. Because of the ongoing use of black labor in both the prison and cemetery's construction, the local community fostered deep ties to Andersonville. It became a place recognizable with freedom fights and personal opportunity. As Union troops were freeing those in Galveston, Texas, the local community in Andersonville was rooting themselves into its history and seeking opportunities for work and education. Please follow along for part two of our Juneteenth series as we explore the options which came available to freed people here in Andersonville and how these opportunities sculpted local history.